From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empey Presents. I wish that we could be there in person with you, but we're not able to do that. This is about the best we can do, but it's a joy for us to come into your home or your office, or perhaps you're watching our website. We have a really good one. If you've never uh, gone there before, why well, you might want to sometime, jvim.com. Today we're going to be discussing some very, very important headlines. The decline and fall of Christian America. Can you believe it? And booze rules America. That's one of the headlines in studying for this program. I learned something that Christianity is the largest religion in the world. More people profess Christianity Two than billion. any other. Yes, Jack, it amazed me. But because of the events that are taking place right now, people are talking about everything that is happening in the last days prior to the Lord's return. A lot of people are talking about it, last day's fever by Troy Anderson, the last day's fever. But there are others and they're scoffers in the last days. How can they be scoffers? That, that's a picture where the Lord came right out of the tomb. Oh my, oh my, we've stood there many times. Scoffers in the last days. I can't imagine with all the signs going on around us that anybody could scoff about it. There are 1,000 signs recorded in 10,385 verses and that's one verse out of every four and you say, ah, I'm not that interested in prophecy. Well, you are in trouble with God then my dear friend. Scoffers, 2 Peter 3, 3, knowing this first that there shall come in the last day, scoffers saying, ah, where is the promise of his coming since our fathers fell asleep? All things continue as they were. Get your head out of the sand, Mr. Ostrich. The signs are here, every last one of them. Dr. Walford says, out of the thousand, there are 500 fulfilled before Christ calls us home and 500 fulfilled when he returns and sets up his kingdom with us. All 500 are here. We're in the last one now. And that is when the dictator of the new world order comes to power and it's in progress. Folks, he's coming soon. But in that same chapter where it talks about scoffers in verse 3, it says, you think it's not going to happen? Verse 10, the day of the Lord will come. And then he gives a little clue when, verse 8, a day is like a thousand years, a thousand years is like a day. The Jews and the rabbis build on that verse as well as the Christian fathers for the first 300 years of the faith. What did it mean, a day is like a thousand years? God created the world in six days, Genesis 1.31, and he rested on the seventh day, Genesis 2.2. The world will go on for 6,000 years of history, and then Jesus will come the seventh day and get ready for another shock. We are right at this moment beginning to enter the seventh day just when the new world order is going to come to power. It's here. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, Amen. Deep. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Revelation 22.20. You know, we're going to be dealing with the proof that the signs Jack has been giving to us is in our global headlines. But first of all, Jack, could you give us some of those signs, please? Acts 2.19, I will show signs in the earth. And then Jesus said in Luke 21.11, great signs shall there be from heaven and mentions in verse 25 where they're taking place in the sun, in the moon, in the stars, in space. And then he says in verse 26, men's hearts will fail them for fear for looking after those things which are coming to pass on the earth. Why the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Signs. Now listen to me very carefully. You can find the signs in Matthew 24, in Mark chapter 13, in Luke chapter 17 and 21. There are 1,000 of them, as I said, and 500 before the rapture are here. And then the other five happened when we returned to Christ, as I said earlier. And I'll tell you, if any crowd ever made Jesus disgusted, it was this crowd who said, I don't believe he's coming. How do you know he's coming? What about signs? 
Listen, in Matthew 16, verses 2 and 3, Jesus said, and he's very angry, he said, you people look up into the heavens and you say what kind of weather there will be tomorrow because you can tell from space. But he said, you cannot discern the signs of the times, you hypocrites. If you don't think Christ will be angry at you at the Bema seat when the rewards are passed out for you because you were a scoffer and mocked the second coming, you're going to learn better. Very, very interesting there, Jack. And we're going to be dealing with some global headlines right now. Now, friends, here is a very big, big sign. Take a look from World Net Daily. Bible expert proclaims Jesus is not God. Again, one in three Christians say Jesus sent. And many beliefs, many paths to heaven. Whoa, take a look at this one. And Jesus said, go forth into the world and sample the truths of all religions. All right, let's go back there, Jack, at the very first one. Whoa, that Jesus is not God. How about that? Romans 9, 5, Christ came who is over all God, blessed forever. 1 Timothy 3, 16, great is the mystery of godliness, that God was manifest in the flesh. 1 John 5, 20, we have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. But you know who's messed it all up? A slimy being called the Antichrist who is going to be controlled by Satan. And it says, Antichrist shall come, 1 John 2, 18. In 2 John 1, 7, it says, Many deceivers are entered into this world who confess not that Jesus Christ, God, is coming in the flesh. You don't believe it? Then you are a deceiver and an antichrist. Ooh, a deceiver and an antichrist. That's awfully strong, isn't it? Well, something else I want Jack to zero in on. This expert who he had a national radio show said, Jesus is not God. Jesus is not God. How about that statement, Jack? An expert Bible teacher, and he says, Jesus is not God. I think he's a bologna eater. Well, okay, I'll <laughs> but, accept that. But let me give you a why. All right. First of all, it says, Jesus did no sin, 1 Peter 2.22. He knew no sin, 2 Corinthians 5.21. He is holy, harmless, undefiled, and separate from sinners, Hebrews 7.26. And God cannot be tempted with evil, James 1.13. And Jesus is my God. As I showed you a moment ago, I just got the Vatican magazine, the Catholic Report, and they had a full message on Dan Brown who did the Da Vinci Code and it says this is the man who made people think that Jesus could sin he wasn't really God if they studied their Bible instead of that fictitious trash of his they'd know better. Oh Jack I'm so glad for the Bible it answers all our questions about all of these headlines Jesus didn't sin he came to cleanse us from our sins with his precious blood. Well, let's go on here to another question. Many beliefs, many paths to heaven. Uh, that's a pretty strong thought right now, Jack, out there. Many paths to heaven. You know, that's the biggest farce ever. Why? Because 400 times this book says Jesus is the only way to heaven, and 700 times it mentions the shedding of blood as the way of salvation and because of it, we have redemption, salvation through Christ's blood, Ephesians 1, 7. But listen to me right now. There is no other way. Now, I know what Oprah Winfrey says, but she doesn't know what she's talking about with her new age baloney, and she's the new age guru for today. And Obama, in his interview in the Chicago Sun-Times and USA Today, said there are many ways. We don't have to have Jesus. Wrong! Listen to what Jesus said. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come unto the Father but by me. And wow, what he said in John 8, 24. You die in your sins if you don't believe in me. Christ died for our sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 and 4. And if you don't believe that, then listen to this, Galatians 1, 7. Though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel than the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus, let him be accursed. Look up accursed in Webster's Dictionary. You've heard me say it many times. It means to be doomed, damned, and to fry in the fire. Amen. I agree. Whoa, Jack. <laughs> You're going to see some headlines right now that are very, very eye-opening about our society. The first one here on the cover of Newsweek, the decline and fall 
of Christian America. Let's see why that could be very true. Our rancorous society hits a new low. Rancorous means a hateful society. Going on, prison population at all-time high, 2.3 million. And identity theft up 22%. hits a five-year high. And thieves are stealing everything in sight. Thieves loot cemeteries. Oh, can you believe this? For metal? And then going on, thieves stripping churches in the UK of valuable metal. Even the churches. It's, it's worldwide. College drinking gets more extreme. And colleges move boldly on student drinking. Also, alcohol abuse weighs heavy, weighs heavy on the Army. 300 counselors are needed right now to fill the void. That makes 600 they have to have just to deal with the Army men who are alcoholics. Yes, and pot plantations on the rise. Now, friends, do you wonder why they said the decline and fall of Christian America? We've shown you so much going on in our country, Jack, and around the world. Oh, Rexel, I'm angry at the devil and angry at all the sin that's going on in America by some professed Christians. Now, Ted Koppel, when he was on Nightline, said, God gave 10 commandments, not 10 suggestions. What are they? Exodus chapter 20, verses 3 to 17. Thou shalt have no gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any grave an image. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. Now thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness lie. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, wife, or possessions. And you know why they're doing these things and breaking these commandments? Because of a filthy thing called booze and drugs. Most of the crime and corruption that's going on is because of drunkenness and people using pot and marijuana and heroin and all the rest. Addictions galore. And I'm so mad. You know, great Christian colleges used to take a stand and now in our day and age, even in Grand Rapids, Cornerstone has just lifted the ban on alcoholism and drinking for the professors. What do you think it's going to do to the kids? The colleges secular are just loaded with kids boozing and getting drunk and committing every sin there is. Coed dorms. And it's all tied in with that liquor and tied in with the drugs. And yet we've got this going on today in our Christian colleges. You say it doesn't matter. The word of God doesn't condemn it. Wait a minute. Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. And whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Proverbs 20, verse 1. Be not among wine drinkers. Proverbs 23, 20. Look not upon the wine when it is red, when it moves itself. Fermentation. Why? Because no drunkard can enter the kingdom of heaven, 1 Corinthians 6, 10, when they started drinking that stuff that fermented. And Galatians 5, 19 to 21 mentions 17 sins, and number 16 is drunkenness. And he says, of the which I tell you before, so I tell you now again, that they which do such things shall not, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. God forgive these Christian colleges that are lifting the banners of holiness and pushing booze, God's going to hold you accountable. Oh, yes, Jack. Could I just say that we should never put a question mark where God puts a period. If the Lord gave us Ten Commandments, there's a period. There's not a question mark. We need to be following Him. And friends, when you follow the Lord, you're going to have peace. You're not going to become an alcoholic or a drug abuser. You're going to live for God. And so Jack is going to show you right now how you can be forgiven of anything you don't want there, how you can overcome anything you don't want there, and the Lord can be your Savior right now. Jack. If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Will you confess right now? Look at the Lord and say, Father, forgive me for my sin. Forgive me for my drinking. Forgive me for pot. Forgive me for my sexual escapades. Forgive me for my lying and swearing. Forgive me for my dirty talk. Forgive me for using your name in vain. God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Cleanse me now. 
Wash me with your precious blood that you shed at Calvary. Lord Jesus, I take you as my Savior today, and I'll live for you, and I'll get these things out of my life, and I promise you this in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, amen. And friends, when God forgives, he forgets. We can't necessarily do that here on earth. We remember what we've done sometimes, but we should forget to. Because when we confess to the Lord and he comes into our heart, he forgives and forgets. It never happened. How good to know you can start new with him. If you prayed that prayer, will you please write to me? There's my address. Please write to me. First steps in the new direction I will send to you absolutely free. Because the Lord wants to walk with you. He wants to give you a new life in him. How wonderful it is to walk with the Lord in this day and age in which we're living. And you can overcome anything in your life because the Lord's there. He'll give you victory. So write to me, first steps in the new direction, in the mail as soon as I hear from you. And here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive our wonderful offer of the week, A Place Called the Heaven by Dr. Robert Jeffries. All right, I want you to be sure and listen to Bob right now because I would want you to order this. And uh, here's our announcer, Bob. To order your copy of the book, A Place Called Heaven, with the bonus DVD, Heaven, the Eternal Home for Some, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impey Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impey Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, N9A, 6Y1. Thank you so much, Bob. I appreciate that. Now, please call or write for the wonderful offer of the week, A Place Called Heaven. It's one of the finest books I've ever read on heaven. And of course, it is by Dr. Jeffries. And I have a bonus I'm going to be sending with it when I get your order. And it is Heaven, the Eternal Home for Some. All right, friends, I just want to give you a closing thought here. I've used it before, but I think it's very, very important for this program. Don't wait for six strong men to take you to church. <laughs> we'll look forward to being in your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you, and so do we so very, very much. Bye-bye.